I'm Jamie Kozakowski. Um, I'm in the Air Force. I used to go to this school. Um, I was in the Air National Guard, and I do Air Force ROTC at UNH. Um, yeah, I've been in for almost two years. I haven't been deployed or anything. I've gone on TDY to Portugal, and I did a training in Pennsylvania, but that's just about it for all the traveling I've done. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Nick Nato. Uh, I was in the Marine Corps. I did six years. I did a tour in Fallujah, Iraq in 2005-2006. Um, I was wounded overseas. I uh, finished off my tour, came back home, and uh, finished off my military career. And uh, that's my history in the military. Hello, my name is Julie. Um, truth be told, I'm not a veteran, but I have served my community back home. Um, while then firefighting, EMT, first responder, and I spent 15 years in the operating room. As a surgical tech, I did work with veterans back home, and now I have the privilege of joining the Clear Path family, uh, training service dogs for veterans. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah, I'm Staff Sergeant Franklin. Uh, I'm in the Air Force. I've been in the Air Force for 11 years. I am born and raised in Florida. I got stationed at McGill Air Force Base for the majority of my career. I was there for 10, 10 and a half years. I deployed one time. I went to Al Dhafer Air Base uh, right outside of Abu Dhabi. Uh, we sampled the fuel to make sure that, like, whenever we receive fuel, to make sure the fuel is like not dirty or it doesn't have water in it or anything of the sort. Um, and I uh, put in for recruiting as a special duty, and now I'm up here in New England recruiting for the Air Force, and I love it. I'm sorry, Murray. I'm a recruiter as well. I recruit up in the uh, Lawrence area. Um, been in 12 years. I'm from Florida as well, West Palm Beach area. Uh, firefighter by trade, so I've been in. Um, I've been to station in New Mexico was my first station, then I moved back to Florida for a little bit. Uh, then went to San Antonio, and now I'm up here in New England. I've been deployed three times, went to Africa, Jordan, and Iraq. Um, a lot different than you would think, deployments. I got to swim with whale sharks uh, in Africa. I got to go see the Dead Sea. I got to see where Indiana Jones was filmed. So the Air Force deployments are a little bit different than what you probably see in movies. Um, it's a lot laid back. You know, when I was over there as a firefighter, that's what I'm doing over there. If it's not on fire, I'm not really helping. So, um, yeah, I've, my wife, I met her in Africa. Uh, she's in the military as well. She's been in 15 years. Uh, she outranks me. She has to make sure I tell people that. Um, she makes more money than I do. Um, no kids. We have a great day. And yeah, this is all new to me being in New England, but I absolutely love it up here. I love winters now. I hated it before, but now, now I'm enjoying it. So thanks for having us out here. I appreciate it. Um, Scott Wade, I live in Shirley, um, United States Army. Um, I've been out since 1983, so I've been out for a while. Uh, my daughter goes to school here, so I'm a soccer team. Um, I was a combat engineer, um, basically put obstacles in, took obstacles out, um, slow the, uh, the enemy down or give our, our, our troops to uh, reach them. Um, there was a lot of heavy equipment operations, stuff like that when I was in, tanks, dozers, it didn't matter. Everything they had we drove, so um, that's about it. Hello. My name is uh, Dana Abbott. I was in the United States Air Force for four years. I served from 1983 to 1987. Really enjoyed my time in the military. It was like, I tell people all the time that, except for marrying my wife, it was the best thing I ever did. <laughs> but, uh, and I tell a lot of you young guys, you're a little bit older maybe, that, um, if you don't know what you're going to do in life, if, you're not, if you don't want to go to college or um, you don't want to do a trade, join any branch of the military. It, it's, um, it's a good way to start your life. And not only do you benefit from that, but you also serve your country. And that's, that's a very honorable thing to do. Well, thank you. It's, um, Steve Burnham. I was actually born in this town. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, the house I'm living in right now belonged to my grandmother, and I was born in that house. It's amazing how life comes around and comes back to you. 
Uh, I was in the Navy, in the Seabees. Uh, one of my first bases was Gitmo, Cuba. And uh, we put in mines and the uh, cables, I don't know if you've seen them on these movies and stuff uh, where the planes come in and the, the tail hook grabs the cable mm -hmm. and slows them down. Well, we put in the arresting gear, that's what they call it. Why did you guys decide to join? Yeah, who wants that first? Um, mine was mostly for school. Um, with the guard, I get like full tuition paid for, so that was a big thing. And also traveling, really want to see the world, and it's like a great opportunity to do that. Also serving my country. <laughs> my, I have like a, a lot of my family members are in the service, so it was like kind of a push for my family to join. So I joined the military. Um, it was right after I graduated in 2003, so right after September 11th. Um, went into the Marine Corps because uh, at, at, they're the best of the best. Um, and uh, I knew I was going to get deployed overseas, and, and, and so I, I went to, I was infantry, so, and uh, I was uh, a turret gunner, so I was on top of the truck and uh, part of a quick response team. So whenever something bad happened, we were the first ones to, uh, to go to that call. So we'll kind of, so we'll be here way longer. Yeah, there's a lot of benefits. <laughs> so 30 days leave, uh, you can have college. I mean, college is paid for. So I joined the Air Force because I didn't want to go to college. And I ended up going to college. I have a degree now because all of that is just, like he said, you go to boot camp, you go to tech school. Just for doing the things you do, you get college credits. Um, GI Bill, yeah. Yeah. so I, I use my GI Bill to pay for my master's. Um, he's used his to transfer over to his son, so his two-year-old son, uh, $75,000, right around seven, I think it's like 72 right now, uh, transferred to his two-year-old son to go to college. So a lot of different options you can do with it. Um, yeah, like I said, I haven't paid a dime for college yet. That's probably the biggest benefit that I took advantage of was educational benefits. Um, but just the overall, like something that's not really a tangible thing is overall structure is probably the best benefit that I've gotten from the military, not just the military, but the Air Force. Um, every day has a purpose. Uh, we try to get something accomplished to be better the next day. Uh, and that's a motto that's kind of just instilled in you. Um, that's really what I've taken away is probably my best benefit of this. Why'd you guys join? What was the motivation to do that when you were 18 or whatever? I liked the idea of the service. I wasn't <laughs> used to taking orders as most kids aren't. <laughs> but uh, my brother was one of the bigger factors. My brother was in the Marine Corps, a jarhead they called him. And uh, he went in as a wise punk, he dropped out of school. And uh, he became head of communications for the South for United Airlines. From the military. And uh, that impressed me so much. I love my brother. Uh, at times I'd like to beat him to a pulp, but he was bigger than me. <laughs> so, uh, but. Uh, for whatever reason, if you ever do, you won't regret it. I can guarantee you that. Um, some may not feel it's a lifelong career. I didn't. But I'm still doing stuff that I learned in the service. And I use it every day. Like I said, I wish you all the best. Talk about, yeah, I, I was 27 when I joined the Air Force. Um, I was kind of bouncing around job to job. Um, a good friend of mine had gone in before me and said, Dana, um, you know, you should come in. Um, it, you know, and it, it, so I went in the Air Force of all the, because uh, I was 27 at the age, when a lot of young kids like Steve went in, he was up probably 18 or 19. But um, I didn't want to go in to be a, a combat person. I wanted to go to be a, um, uh, a 
what I did, a heavy equipment operator. I wanted to do that fine. And I thought that if I went in, I could get a job on the outside because a lot of, of my friends' parents that were in the military said that a good way to start was in the military because when you come out, you know how to take orders, you know how to dress the way you're supposed to dress, keep your hygiene, um, be on time at, at your job. Um, so I went in and um, uh, while I was in, I was going to stay in for 20, 25 years. But I always said if something comes up on the, you know, where a job opportunity opens up, I'll look into it and get out. And um, someone had offered me a job at UPS and I became a truck driver for UPS and, uh, and I made pretty good money doing that. And I uh, settled down here in Air, raised my family here. All my kids went to Air High School and Bay Hill Talk. Can you speak to some of the skills that you gained? All right. I would say um, a lot of like leadership skills, um, learning how to lead people. Um, it's also cool because you learn, like when you're like at like basic training and stuff, you meet people from all around like, like the country. So I have, I have like friends in like other countries now. I have friends in other states. So I feel like, I don't know if that's like a skill, but like, like friendship, I guess. You learn to like meet new people. So, skills, I was infantry, um, so a lot of skills don't really apply to home life, unless if you're going into like law enforcement or like an EMT or firefighters and stuff like that. Um, but the skills is how to work in a group, how to kind of think outside the box uh, when you're given tasks. Um, yeah, skills, skills in a sense to kind of like translate outside of the military for infantry are very kind of far few in between, but if you're going into any of the first responder fields, it's definitely uh, good skills where you're, you're learning how to work under pressure and, and you know lots of things can be going on around you, but you're still calm and you're still able to think clearly and figure out what steps do I need to do to either help out or, or uh, get out of the situation that you're in, so. You said you trained off, didn't you? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Me. Yeah. I'm starting. You're yeah. starting. Okay. I have a little bit of a background with the sheriff's canine unit um, in, on the west coast where I'm from originally. So the I have some tactical training as well. So getting into the service dog program, um, it was it was fortuitous. It was just the right time um, when the door opened and and I met Nick. And so it's it's a little second nature. There's a lot to learn, um, but animals. Dogs in general are very, very therapeutic. And I mean, I have my own, you know, backstory with the wildland firefighting and, and um, you know, my training and to, to meet these dogs, it, it definitely brings a sense of calmness to my life. So I've always been the kind of person that has wanted to serve my community, to serve the people um, that I need along the way to help them. And so this is kind of my way of being able to, you know, pay it forward. Uh, so it's going to be a nice, uh, nice long career for me. Adventure. Um, he's uh, he's pretty okay to work for. <laughs> so, well, we used to go through it's called it's called Pace Over Forge now. It's kind of like a simulated deployed environment. Um, so I got to go when it was called Peace Week, where you go for a whole week. Well, it was still the water. You had an obstacle course they have to go through, and they throw you a rope, and you grab it, and you have to like swing across. And that water is dirty. If you fall, freezing cold, you get made fun of because you're not supposed to fall. Um, so my TI was there, had the rope, and they go, they tell you when to jump because they, they try to help you out to jump and time the rope. So they go, okay, jump. And my TI never threw the rope. I was like, no. <laughs> and they go, jump, but still not throwing the rope. Did you have to go when it was B-Suite and you had to catch the rope? Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody threw the rope, and I got thrown into that nasty mud water. Dang. And, and, nobody, and then I got made fun of by my TI and had to just take it, even though I know, and she knew that, and never threw the rope. So that was a very cold day. I didn't fall in the water. Yeah. <laughs> I was the only one to fall in the water, but. Yeah, that's terrible because then you're wet the whole time. The entire the day. It was like, the first thing in the morning, so I'm rest. I'm soaking wet, covered in mud, dirt, water, made fun of the entire day. You don't get hosed down at all. Not much fall in the water. <laughs> yeah. Go in this gas chamber with like your gas mask on, and you're supposed to 
take it off and you're supposed to recite your name. Name and your reporting statement. And your reporting statement. CS? Yeah. So it's like, like anytime you report to a TI, it's like Sergeant whoever, trainee Murray reports his order. That's like your reporting statement that you say before you talk to a TI. Yeah, so you're supposed to take your gas mask off, take a breath in, <laughs> and then say this stuff. There's no shot. I literally, I took it off, I went, and then I tried to talk, and I was like, okay, I'm leaving. And I just walked out, and they were like, okay, just get out. It was, yeah, that was still Was it like filled with nitrous oxide? So it's, I don't know what it is. Like yeah, yeah CS gas. CS gas, it's like a tear gas. It's like a tear gas. Yeah. So, so suppose, I, I remember that um, when I did it, they, they gave you, you, you have to go and do that, but do not run. You quietly walk out the door. Quietly. Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, yeah. quietly. So walk out. most most guys don't walk; they run. The problem was where I was on Leonardwood. When you went out the door, if you went too fast, it was a very large tree. And lots of people had to <laughs> walk out because they're running out with their eyes closed because your eyes yeah. are burning. You can't read; your nose is burning. Yeah, yeah. So in a way, it was funny if you actually walked out and saw people laying on the ground. <laughs> What was the purpose of the gas chamber? I have no idea. Well, it's yeah. to show you that that's why the compressor. Gas work. Yeah, to show yeah, what you Gas might definitely work, because before I took it off, I was fine. Yeah. <laughs> then I took it off, I was not fine. And to show why it's illegal, that type of uh, oh, chemical warfare. warfare. Yeah. Same thing why police officers get tased and pepper sprayed so they know what they're actually doing to other people. Uh, yeah, gas chamber was no fun. No. Everyone's on some of my applicants, I get to like, I can't wait. I was like, oh, you can wait. Yeah. Good luck. Get back to me on that. Consideration that you had the experience in Iraq, you said. Yep. Uh, in one of those scenarios, what was what was your reaction um, when you faced reality in the battleground? Yeah. So again, you know, when the first time you see it, um, you kind of hesitate. Like, is this really happening? And I think that's the first response everybody has. But then as things go, you just start moving forward and it's all muscle memory. You just start going and you start just figuring out what the mission is and, and you kind of get through each step one at a time. Um, I was wounded overseas. Um, I was a turret gunner, part of a quick response team. So as we're uh, going to call to call when other people were in trouble, we'd be the first ones to show up. Um, so I had no choice. I was in a truck, I was on top of the truck, and as long as my driver was going in that direction, I had to follow, right? And um, I got hit with the roadside bomb, and um, I was okay, I took shrapnel. Um, I ended up surviving it, finished off my entire tour overseas, and um, it just kind of made me a little bit more heightened alert in things, you know, um, every little thing that's getting even more heightened after that, because you don't want you don't want to get hurt again. You don't want somebody else getting hurt again. So for me, in those experiences, it kind of made me even more alert to the situation of where and what's going on. I think a lot of people too have the misconception that if you go in the service, there's a good chance of dying. And um, you know, who wants that? But for every combat person, there's 11 people that serve behind him. Uh, you could be a mailman in the service, you could be, like you say, a plumber, a carpenter, um, you could be a cook, you could, uh, you know, this, uh, you could be into high tech. Uh, this, so there's so many things that you can do. And uh, so I heard that a lot by young kids. Oh, I don't want to die. It's like, well, who does? But, um, you know, but by serving this country, um, it, it, it's what the team says. It's, uh, <coughs> It's, a, it's an honor. Yeah, so, you know, I came back home. Yeah, good question. No, I appreciate that. So now I work over at Clear Path for Veterans. We're located at Fort Devens in Air Mass. Um, so when I came back home, I struggled a lot. I, um, I suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I have a traumatic brain injury um, and uh, some other issues that I have. Um, and I was in law enforcement. I got out of law enforcement. And I was really struggling with kind of dealing with the things that I've seen overseas and, the, and, and what I had gone through. And, and anybody who says that you're the only one is lying to you. There's multi, everybody goes through it too, just at different stages. And I, I had a hard time kind of coming back home and figuring out what I was gonna do and where I was gonna go. And I started working, um, we got a puppy 
uh, my own personal puppy and I started working with my own dog because it forced me to get out of out of the house it forced me to you know take it out to the bathroom go for walks and talk to people and I saw the benefits of how it helped me so now over at clear path for veterans and we train the service dogs at no cost to the veterans um, and this is about a year and a half to two year process um, it takes uh, anywhere between twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars to train one dog and then statistically speaking only forty percent of all service dogs in training actually pass right so the ones that don't pass we utilize as emotional support dogs for veterans instead right one of the cool things that we do uh, with all of our service dogs is we name them after fallen veterans to kind of keep their story and their memory alive so down in our uh, training area we have pictures of the veterans who have fallen and a picture of the dog that's next to them that the, uh, the dog's named after and kind of keeps that memory in, in, their, in their story going. Yeah, I think we all kind of, you know, even if you haven't deployed, you know, military you know, takes up a lot. If they say go, you're going, right? Um, one thing that for me is I actually met my wife one month before I deployed overseas. And so a lot of us, uh, a lot of my wife and I, we just talked on the telephone or emailed back and forth. That was our kind of relationship, our first year that I was gone. Um, you know, so I know people who have families and they have, you know, kids that are here and it's it's a struggle, it's a balance, you know. Um, for me, it was a little different because I had, other than my mom and my dad and my brother, you know, and my girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, it was a little different. Like I could kind of leave everything home and. And deal with what I need to overseas but the balance now you know um, there's been some struggles up and down but the big thing is just talking and communicating back and forth and saying hey this is where I'm at and and making sure that we're on the same page well, what was like the coolest fight that you put like, cool. was wrong. I don't want my season no. uh, it was probably the was it the B the B2 is that the that's the big one that's the, the black one yeah yeah so that that one was at McGill and a uh, pretty cool story actually about that so I was passing it I fueled it and then so it was daytime and I fueled it I, I went out there and like th that plane is it has its own like security detail that travels around with that plane so if they land at a base like all those people will get off and they'll put like a, a cordon around the plane and they'll have like their own like security team and stuff that you know watches out for the plane and stuff even though we're like on a base already being secured but anyways so I filled up that plane so they, they checked out my, my truck they had to make sure my truck didn't have like bombs on it and stuff all sorts of stuff and then so this is daytime later on in the night like the sun went down and they moved that plane like into a big like hangar that could like house the jet and uh, I was driving past it and I kind of like took my phone out and I took a look, quick picture of it and uh that's a no-no by the way yeah that's a big no-no you don't want to think that's not not the plane you take a picture of Any I, I thought i was being slick so i was like <laughs> as i was driving by and then i i get like 40 maybe 45 seconds past like the the hangar and there's like uh, a cop behind me one of the like security forces an air force cop and uh so I stop, I pull over, and I'm like, man, what did I do? I have no idea what I even did. So then um, he comes up to me, and he's like, yeah, you're going to need to delete that photo. I was like, well, that's crazy. I couldn't believe he even saw that I even took the photo. So I was like, yeah, no worries. Delete. <laughs> yeah, crazy. That's, uh, but, but to answer your question, the B2, it was my favorite. Yeah, There's an opportunity for you to get educated in things you can't even imagine at this point you know i would i was at the school when it was first built so you know how long ago that was <laughs> and uh i wasn't the greatest in going to school i i did good in school but School wasn't my thing, but I learned more in the service than I ever thought I would. The, the, some of the people in the service are some of the most highly educated people you can imagine. And uh, I was a, a builder, carpenter, whatever you call it, and uh, I went all over the world and met some fantastic people in this world. That's one of the things I remember the most. 
was just meeting the different people and how they live. They may not have had TVs and you know all this kind of stuff, but they had something that you wish for when you get older. That's good friends. And people, people were sick. People would come from all over just to take care of them. It, it's like a, having your own hospital in your neighborhood. It's amazing. It's amazing the, uh, how the people stick together. And uh, I'd be glad to see you guys go in. Uh, not for me, but what you can come out of it with. And you would, you will definitely appreciate it if you ever do go in. This isn't a recruitment speech. I just, I know what it did for me. And I appreciate it so much. And I wish you all the best. I wish you really all the best. Thank you.